Hello everyone and welcome back to the final segment of the day here on the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to you as always by the GSMC Sports Network. And for our final segment of the day, I would like to take a little bit of a respite from NFL talk and switch to the world of college football looking ahead to week four. A lot of intriguing conference matchups. Yes, we are getting into conference play here, getting into the weeds of the college football season as I like to call them. A lot of intriguing games, especially for teams playing each other for the first time in these different conference, as conference realignment has changed the landscape of college football. We're now getting matchups that we never thought could happen again, and they're all intriguing. So without further ado, let's look at some of the best of the best college football games for week four, starting off with a West Coast trip. USC, Michigan. USC. Two point five point point favorites. The money line is minus one thirty seven. Michigan's plus one twelve. And here's the thing about this game: it's definitely lost a lot of luster. Now, if you look at the Michigan side of things, right? If you look at all the turmoil that has happened with this program, the turnover that's happened with this program, you're thinking that there's not much hope left from that championship season last year but they still have a lot of talent it's just that they don't know how to use it at least on the offensive side of the ball they still have donovan edwards they still have khalil mullings they still have colston loveland who's an all-world tight end right now in college football and it's just that the offensive production hasn't been there because they haven't had a solid qb to rely upon well they believe they found him because they switched from a Davis Warren to who everyone thought would presumptively start the season, Alex Orgy. Now, what I like about Alex Orgy is that he is one of those players who has kind of been kept a secret to the college football world. He's played a couple snaps in the Jason McCarthy era where he's just running the football. He's played a couple snaps this season where he's running the football as well. But you haven't really seen him take command of this offense fully. And so that's the, going to be the intriguing storyline for Michigan in this game. If Alex Orgy is the answer, what's this game plan going to look like for the Wolverines? Then I transition to the USC Trojans. And they look very, very impressive through two weeks here. They got a very good win against LSU. They got a shutout against Utah State, and they're playing some of the best football in the Lincoln-Riley. But it might not even be Lincoln-Riley's doing. I really like the hire that he made, letting go of Alex Grinch and all the relationship they had there from their time at Oklahoma together. Brings in a UCLA guy in DeAnton Lynn, and this defense looks rejuvenated. They've incorporated many transfers, many holdovers, and this defense is looking potent. But I do want to also focus on the offensive side of the ball because there's been a lot of hype around Miller Moss. There's potentially a QB that could go within the first five picks of the 2025 NFL Draft. I say slow your roll on that, but what I've been impressed with for Miller Moss has been his ability to have poise and composure in the pocket. I look to his drive against LSU, that two-minute drill against LSU, leading USC down the field, comfortable in the pocket, really kept that team on schedule in that situation, ultimately getting that big win to start off the year. And as the home team, they should feel comfortable, right? But the thing that could, you know, cause them some trouble is the fact that Alex Orgy has many different traits, and you don't necessarily know how he's going to use them in this offense. Sharon Moore might have done this to kind of send a shockwave through the USC Trojans' minds, but it's all going to depend on Alex Orgy himself and his play in this game because you can call the plays for a guy who you believe can be the answer for you at Michigan, but he just has to execute them very well. So that being said, I'm taking Michigan here. I think they're going to cover the spread comfortably. 
I think this is going to be a two-score game. I'm taking USC 27, Michigan 13. I just don't know how Alex Orgy is going to look because I don't necessarily have enough information about him to feel comfortable saying he can lead a full start for this team. But USC definitely looks very impressive at home with a revamped defense with Miller Moss looking comfortable in the system. I like USC. Now let's look at a Big 12 conference game because the Big 12 is looking like one of the best conferences to follow in all of college football right now. And this game is going to be an interesting one because there's a lot of different storylines here. Well, with Cam Rising's health and Ollie Gordon's slow start to the season, we're going to talk about it a little bit more tomorrow as well. Utah versus Oklahoma State. Utah favored by one and a half. Their money line plus 108. OK State's minus 130. And the story of this game is that these are two of the biggest contenders for the Big 12 title. But they do have some question marks and big ones at that surrounding what can happen to them in the future. Especially in the long term for Utah. Because let's start off with them. I like Utah a lot. And I really hope for their sake they're in the debate to go to the Big 12 championship and ultimately the college football playoff. But I can't get past the fact that Cam Rising's health has always been an issue for this team. And this time, I'm not sure they have enough surrounding their backup, who's now Isaac Wilson, to really supplement him for as long as Cam Rising might be out. I'm not as concerned about his hand injury as I was about his injury last year or many years before, but it is something to monitor because now that we're in the thick of conference play, they're going to have to get some nice wins in conference, especially against an OK State team that believes in itself and that believes that they can get Ollie Gordon the second going again this in this game. But if it's Isaac Wilson starting and not Cam Rising, then I have a lot of trepidation for how this game is going to go for Utah. Looking at Oklahoma State, I think that even though they haven't gotten Ollie Gordon going as much as they've wanted to, Alan Bowman's been a pleasant surprise. And not for nothing, even though he's one of the most experienced QBs in college football right now, he hasn't been the most impressive, right? He's been around the Big 12 a lot, bumped around many different teams, finally finds its home at OK State in his seventh year playing college football. And I appreciate, you know, that he's been able to weather the storm, but there's going to come a time where he's just not going to be up to snuff. I can't overlook the fact that last season he almost had as many touchdowns as interceptions, almost as many interceptions as touchdowns thrown. And in this Oklahoma State setup, I do think that Ollie Gordon is still king. I think that he will find his footing again. And in this game especially, I do feel like they want to take advantage of situations where Utah might be getting a little bit behind the eight ball, especially if, you know, Isaac Wilson can't keep that offense on schedule. So look for this to be a close game. Look for it to be a very important game right down to the end. But I am going to take Utah in this one. And the reason why I'm taking them is that I just believe in their defense a little bit more than OK State's. I believe that Utah has built to this point they can handle the Cam Rising injury on both sides of the football. Isaac Wilson, yeah, he wasn't that impressive, but he was competent, didn't turn the ball over that often in that game against Utah State. So as long as Utah can stay ahead of schedule on both sides of the ball, I think they should be fine. I think that they're going to cover just barely 24-21 will be my final. Now let's look at another new conference game, Tennessee, Oklahoma. Tennessee, seven and a half point favorites. Minus 162 in their money line. OU is plus 134. And this game really is intriguing. Josh Hoipel facing his former team in terms of where he came from. Oklahoma assistant, obviously. And this game should have some very interesting storylines in terms of how both of these teams are building to start of the year. In Tennessee, they have the new quarterback in Nico Iamalieva. Looked very impressive through two games. Really against Kent State. 
even though he didn't play that much because of that blowout score, which was very ridiculous in my opinion. I think that, you know, just getting him involved, utilizing this offense to the best of its abilities, I really like what Tennessee has shown me thus far. Whereas Oklahoma, you can say they've been impressive in terms of getting to be undefeated at this point because they could have lost those games, though. I think that Jackson Arnold really is working his way into the system. doesn't necessarily look comfortable, unlike what Nico has shown us early on. And the defense, yes, they've been very good. I like this Oklahoma defense a hell of a lot. But I do think that they can't necessarily put it all together. They haven't shown cohesion in both the units thus far. So that's the reason why I think Tennessee should feel like a heavy favorite. They played well on both sides of the ball. Their defense one of the best in the country. And Josh Hoipel has these boys flying up and down the field. I like Tennessee potentially in a bit of a quote-unquote blowout here. I think that Tennessee can run Oklahoma off the field. I think that Oklahoma simply isn't ready at this current moment in time for conference play. If this game would have happened, uh, uh, let's say, two or three weeks on the road, then maybe they would be ready for it. But it feels like they're getting thrown into the fire here way too early, Oklahoma. So it could be a bloodbath for them. I'm taking Tennessee 37-20 in this one. And then the last game, NC State, Clemson, look. Neither of these teams are where they want to be at this point in the season. I think that Clemson, you know, had a shock to their system in that first game against Georgia. They had a nice bounce back against Appalachian State. But at the end of the day, they really aren't the same Clemson as we talked about when they were in their little dynasty period in the early to mid 2010s. And then NC State kind of lost a little bit of its luster in terms of its top 25 pedigree, but they still are a dangerous team. I like Grace McCall, obviously been around as well, been at Coastal for a long time, coming over to NC State. He's one of the more experienced QBs in college football. I like the receiving core, but it's going to come down to, you know, whether I believe Gabe Klumnik has more performances like the one against Appalachian State in him. I think he has a couple in him left. He's going to have to have them, especially. They're 11.5 point favorites, and they're minus 165 in the money line. So, I'd say that they can potentially win this game and win it big. I'm going to take them, say, 22-10 in this game. I don't think it's going to be high scoring. I think it's going to be a very weird ACC game. But overall, let me know what you think in the comments because all four of these games, very exciting, indicative of conference realignment, and they could go either way. But let me know what you think in the comments, whether I got it right or wrong in terms of college football. But that will just about do it for the show. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for your comments as well. This has been the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you as always by the GSMC Sports Network. I've been Christopher Shepard. Thank you for tuning in yet again. Please consider liking, following, and subscribing to the show and the network is greatly appreciated. Keep on using the Super Chat, Super Thanks, and Super Stickers features. Make yourselves available to them as always to grow the show, interact with the show even more. But thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow to close out the week on the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, same time as always. I've been Chris Shepard. Thank you all yet again.